In this video, I'm going to show you a very quick and simple way to create a marker animation inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, the first thing you want to do is create a sequence. And once you've done that, we are going to create a new background. So we'll go to this button here, which is the new item button. Select that and select black video. Drag that onto video layer one in your sequence and just extend this for how long you want this to be. Then we go into effects, search for tint, T-I-N-T. That should be under color correction. We'll drop that onto our black video and we'll map the black to white. And this is our simple white background. Now from here, we want to create some text. So we're gonna go into the T icon and we are just going to select the video and we can type out our article. Now, as you can see, nothing is happening in my example and that is because all of my text is white. So if I highlight it, go into effect controls and the text, I can change the color of that to black. I can also see this is not the most dynamic text in the world. So I'm gonna change this to something a little bit more interesting. So maybe times. So this feels like it's more appropriate for print and therefore a highlighter effect. But once you're happy with the look of that, you can now just work through the process of adding in your text. As you can see, I have been really lazy in my example and just copied one sentence over and over again, but ignore that. So now that you've added your text, what we want to do is just extend that out for the entire duration or the length that you want this to appear for. And we can now work on the marker animations. So to do that, we're just going to drag the text on video two up to video three. And this is because we want to add a solid underneath the text, not on top. Then from there, we'll just take that black video that we had, we'll hold option and we'll drag that up. That is copy and paste. That's a quicker way of doing it. Option is on Mac. If you are on Windows, I believe it is Alt. So hold Alt, drag the clip up and then release. Alternatively, you can just Command C, Control C and then Command V, Control V. But from there, we're going to go into tint and we're going to go map black to and select the highlighter color of your choice. So let's go for a highlighter yellow. You can see we've now got this yellow background. So from here, we want to find the text that we want to highlight and we're going to go into effect controls, into motion, uniform scale and deselect. So now we just want to decrease the scale height and we just move that into position like this. So this is what we want. Then I'm just going to pull the width down and then move the position so that we are completely filling just the text that we want to highlight. Now this may take a little bit of time because you don't want there to be overlap. If you rush this and it looked like this, it just looks a bit messy. So take your time and do a clean job of this. Make sure it's only wrapping the part of the text that you want to highlight and bring attention to. And then once you've done that, there are a few different ways of animating this on. We could go into opacity, select the free draw bezier, draw a mask around this. We'll go to the end point where it should have finished animating, create a brand new keyframe on the path. Then we'll go to the beginning and we'll pull that over to the left. Of course, we want to pull the mask feather down as well because the feather you'll see is just a soft edge like this. So if we pull that down to zero, you can see you've got a nice clean hard edge. Before we carry on with this video, I first just want to take a very quick second to talk about Motion Elements. Motion Elements is a place where you can download Premiere Pro templates, After Effects templates, templates for Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve. They've also got stock video, music, graphics, Notion templates, and so much more. And the great thing is Motion Elements and I have teamed up. They are sponsoring this channel for a whole year. So I'm really happy to say that if you click the link in the description below, you will get 70% off your first month when you sign up to the subscription. Now back to the video. So that is one way of doing it. And that way worked completely fine. You do have to be careful though that the mask edge is straight here. As it's animating on, you don't want this mask edge to be a bit wonky. So if you have something like this, you can see it's going to come on at an angle like this, which is a cool effect if you want to go for that. But if you did want that perfectly straight edge, then you need to be very careful with the masking feature. Alternatively, if you wanted to avoid that, we could go into crop, drop crop onto the highlighter black video, pull the right all the way up until it disappears. So in my example, that is 100. Drag that keyframe to the beginning. Then we'll go to the point where we want this to appear and then we'll drag that all the way down to zero. So we should be seeing the entire marker now. Then when we play this back, you can see it's got that perfectly straight edge. 
So two different ways of just animating this on. And of course, if you wanted to, we could highlight all of this, right click, select nest, press OK. We'll go into basic 3D, drag basic 3D onto the nested sequence. And we're just going to swivel this a little bit. Also going to add a little bit of tilt. We'll increase the scale. Move this around and then if we create a brand new keyframe arm position, scale, swivel and tilt, then we move over until this has finished animating. We can pull the scale down to let's say 104. We'll pull the swivel down. We'll pull the tilt up like this. Let's go to zero. And then of course we need to move the position back into position. And when we play this back, you can see we've got this nice animation effect, but we've also got that highlighter effect going on. You can also do some blurring as well. Now there's loads of different blurs that you can choose, but I typically go for a Gaussian blur. I find it pretty quick. It doesn't slow the computer down too much and it looks good. But if you increase the blurriness, you can actually then zoom out, create a brand new mask around the Gaussian blur, and you can just catch the edges of that text like this. Of course, at the moment, everything is blurry except for the corner. So if we go inverted, increase the mask feather, you can see that's how that looks. Of course, you can animate that mask. So if we go to the beginning, create a brand new keyframe on the mask path on the Gaussian blur, and then we go to the end of that movement. If you wanted to, you could move the points of that mask so that the blur is now moving with the animation. So we end up with something like this. Now you've probably noticed it by now, it's the first time I've just noticed it, but you can see black video appearing here. Now I completely missed that because it just blends in. So if you're worried about that, then just go into settings and you want to turn on the transparency grid. And now you can clearly see this checkered background has appeared. And that's just showing me that I've moved over too much. So I'll go to the beginning and just nudge the position over to the left to hide that. Now I'll just play through to make sure I can't see any more of the background. And I think we're there. So now I can just turn off the transparency grid. So let's go back to the very beginning. Let's play this back and you will see this is what we have created. Of course, if you wanted to add multiple different markers in at the same time, then you can just go into that nested sequence, drag the text up, make a copy of that highlighter text, and then just move that around to where you need that to go. So I'm going to drag that down here. I'm going to increase the scale width because I want to focus on a larger section this time. And this time I'm going to change the marker animation to, let's say, a marker pink. And if I wanted to, I could just nudge that highlighter over so it comes on at a slightly later time. And when we play this back, this is what happens. Of course, at the moment, the animation might look a little bit clunky, and that is because the keyframes are just standard keyframes. So if we go into that highlighter layer, go into the crop, we can highlight both of those keyframes, right click and put ease in. Or alternatively, the first one we can do ease out and the second one we can do ease in. Now, when we play this back, you can see that looks a lot softer and a lot more natural. So if you look at these two different markers, the first one looks very rigid, whereas the second one is a bit more fluid. So you can convert both of those to an ease out and an ease in. And then once you have done all of these steps, you will end up with something like this. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on a future video. See you there.